I think really important to update you on uh, where we're at with our blueprint and the activities moving into next year. So before I begin, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of country and recognise their continuing connection to land, waters, culture and community. I'd also like to pay our respects to the traditional owners in attendance with us today. Well, it's so good to be here in Cairns for Tourism Week, and I can tell you there's not just a buzz in Cairns, there's definitely a buzz around the state. Uh, even being in the Brisbane airport yesterday, half that plane was full of people coming up here to enjoy this week together, and we could certainly feel it as we walked around the city yesterday. So we do have a lot to celebrate. I think all the operators in this room can see uh, what has happened over the past 12 months, and despite some patchy areas, the fact is, we've spent the last 24 months being Australia's top holiday domestic destination. We have seen not just record OVE, but we have seen record visitation to, into the state. And I know many of us, as we look into the new year, we are keen to see how we can defend this. So we've spoken about the headwinds that are facing us. We know the cost of living is biting. We know our travellers' behaviours are changing. And we know the international competition is fierce. But it just means that we are trying to work even harder and think more differently as we move into the path ahead. And today, we want to give you some insights into what the, that agenda of the big and the bold look like since you asked for it and what does 24 look like as well. So for those that weren't at the Blueprint launch, certainly um, it all started at this forum 12 months ago. It was Destination Q this time last year on the Gold Coast that the strategy for towards 2032 was set. We said as an industry we want to grow our industry from 28 billion to 44 billion by 2032. Now, we know that that is a goal that's owned by all of us, but the government then said to us at TQ, we want a strategy, we want a structure, and we want you to give us some clear direction as to how we're going to achieve that from a demand-generating side. So um, to assist us with developing that blueprint, as much as the government asked us what we needed to do, we then went out and set to ask you what we should do. And with that, I promised to you when I started that we would get to all 13 regions within the 100 working days was definitely put out there and really pleased that we were able to meet that promise. So over that course of that period, you gave us a lot of insights, you opened your doors and you gave us some inspiration as to what we could do as an industry to get there. And we were so pleased and proud to present that blueprint back to you on August 3rd in Brisbane, where 400 representatives of this industry travelled from all corners of the state to see that launch. So um, the foundation and that strategy was pretty simple. We wanted to inspire our travellers to visit Queensland. We wanted to be different um, in the next decade ahead through bold and globally recognised marketing and events. And we had to live and breathe that $44 billion and it had to flow out into the region. So we left that day and that night at Howard Smith Wharves. We all rolled up our sleeves and we certainly got on with the job of delivering that agenda for you. And that five point plan that you set for us was very, very clear. And we came up with some pretty, pretty bold goals. We want to hold our lion's share of the domestic market moving into the next decade after a decade of losing it to 2019. Uh, we said that we would want to create a step change in the international visitation and we would nearly double by 2032 from 6 billion to 11 billion um, across the state. We said to you, you said to us we wanted to build the $2 billion global events calendar, which we're excited about, but we had to do it through even closer partnerships than ever before, and that had to be with our destinations. And I think one thing that came through really clearly is that we are working in the most amazing sector on the planet, and we wanted to have a bit of fun in the next decade as well. So... That agenda um, has been set, and I think from then, it's only been three months, but what does that big and the bold, and what has it looked like since we left that day um, after Howard Smith Wharves? So I think from us, we walked outside um, of that room, and we started listening to you again. So we had the framework, and you started to say to us as we continued our travels that the forwards and the numbers moving um, past winter, as much as that was quite solid, they were starting to look soft into Christmas, um, and you were 
were starting to see a change in travellers' behaviour. So they were coming out for the holiday, but they weren't necessarily buying that extra souvenir or buying that extra experience. So um, we knew that we had to think a bit differently moving into Christmas. So with the research that we were seeing, we saw consumer intention to visit Queensland was still really high, but what it meant is that we had to move into a focus on conversion and we needed a really big partner to do that. So I think everyone knows in this room, especially with the economic landscape the being the way it is, a cracking airfare deal definitely drives bookings and it definitely drives business. So we thought, well, let's practice what we preach and let's go really big. And we went 300,000 airfares big. Virgin Australia came to the party and we invested in the biggest domestic airline partnership to date with TEQ. 300,000 airfares on sale across 30 Queensland routes, starting from the sharpest price point we've ever offered, $49. The campaign rewrote the books for Virgin. This campaign generated Virgin's highest ever website visitation in a day, and more than half a million people on that very first day went to that website to explore Queensland. It also saw Virgin's seventh highest day on record for bookings. And the people that were booking in this period uh, were very much travelling in the period that we, you were telling us was soft. So did it help the businesses on the ground? Well, we went out to our operators and we started to ask the question. And right here in Cairns, Crystal Book Collection reported to us that over this period, they saw about a 15 to 20% uplift in their property bookings, which was really positive. We went out to Hamilton Island and they said that this was normally a softer period, but they were seeing the same upturn, about 15 to 20%. And Experience Co, which is up and down the Queensland coast, very much saw an increase in bookings as well. So I'm not saying everybody has benefited, but I think we're getting the outcomes that we were hoping for. And whilst we were on a roll, we wanted to do more. And I know the blueprint has a very strong focus on dispersal to our regions. So we thought, why not? Let's partner with Rex Airlines for the very first time. And I know, Didi, you would be very happy with that, but it did certainly make our regional centres more attractive and affordable. So with that, um, what did that airline partnership do? Well, we saw up to 50% increase in uplift on fares to those destinations and, a, and another 40% on the halo effect as a result. We saw regions such as Birdsville, Longreach, Charleville and Mount Isa see a huge uplift in visitation and bookings through this airline. So, you know, dispersing out to the regions was important and we loved working with our aviation partners to deliver that. But from the domestic front, we moved internationally in the last few weeks and uh, we've certainly had a huge focus on the Team Queensland approach in our international markets. And through the Queensland Government's $200 million aviation fund that's managed by the Department of Tourism, we're certainly making inroads, 26 services, more than $1.67 billion into the economy. And as I was saying earlier, we're 85% recovered, but goodness, that last 15%, we're having to work really hard to deliver. And um, it's going to take a lot of teamwork and a lot of shoe leather and a lot of relationships. So we are investing a lot of time and, and face into these markets, especially in our Asian markets, where being there personally is, makes a really big difference. So you would have seen that we have been in China three times this year, and we have to invest this time and effort. This is a market that saw half a million visitors and 1.6 billion into our economy, and we lost it overnight. Uh, to date, to June, we've only seen 38,000 of those travellers back. So we have had to work really, really hard, and I do give a huge um, kudos to our airports, who are doing the heavy lifting, and so great to see China Eastern and China Southern finally return back to Queensland shores. Um, those two airlines alone will del deliver nearly half a million seats and 755 million into the economy. And when we went over with the Premier just recently, um, the whole discussion around aviation capacity into the region was very much at the forefront. So we do want to, uh, as we do want to grow this market, it is a big focus. And as Tourism Australia was saying on Monday, we do have a diversified portfolio internationally, but there is no market that will deliver the, the numbers and the yield that the China market will in the short and medium and even long term. So we have to really focus on getting that, especially if we want to grow to 11 billion by 2032. But we did speak about the fact that we need to look at new markets as well. And as much as domestic is our bread and butter, the step change in this state will come from the international market. 
one international visitor will spend 74% more than a domestic tourist. So this is about yield as, as much as it is about numbers. And it's so great to see that our traditional markets are coming back. So great to see our Kiwis back, the US, the UK, Japan. They're all continuing to build. And I do acknowledge markets like India are being tagged as Queensland's sleeping giant. This is an emerging powerhouse. As I said earlier, the fifth largest economy will soon move to the third largest economy. Its GDP is 3.1 trillion. The growing middle class is wanting to travel. They have an appetite to get out in the world. And we need to make sure Queensland gets its fair share. So, so excited to be there in a couple of weeks time with Minister Hinchliffe. And then it will be over to the airports to make that magic happen. So we are certainly uh, making our waves across the world to grow our international and certainly for, um, for us it's direct into Queensland. We know that for some destinations in Queensland more than 55% or over half of their international visitors are coming through Sydney or Melbourne. Can you imagine if we can divert some of those numbers into Brisbane or Cairns or the Gold Coast and then into Queensland? If we can get them direct into our gateways and then we can disperse them into the regions, the economic flow on effect can will be seen for a long time to come. So connecting these gateways through aviation access will be key. And there are a lot of new products across the state and every time we travel, you're showing me them firsthand. And, and, and I think with what the, what the blueprint is saying, you do want us to do things a bit differently at TQ. So we use the new products and we use this theme with our year of accessible tourism. And we thought, well, you know what, if the department's going to fund this integrated marketing campaign, let's do something a little bit different for once. And what we did, I think, with all of you was really cool. We did become podcast producers. And that 11-part podcast series, Access That, was brought to you by Queensland, and it gave listeners a first-hand live experience of what it was like to holiday when you have a range of accessibility needs. I want to give a huge shout-out to the operators that participated in that podcast. These operators put their hands up knowing, like as Dylan said earlier today, that they were potentially going to get it wrong. And the whole point of this podcast was to give an unedited, raw version so that mistakes could be published and the industry could learn from these mistakes as well. So I thank the operators for opening their doors and to our, our talent that gave a raw and honest opinion. And you know what? We topped the Apple charts uh, with that very first integrated campaign. We were number one on the Apple podcast charts for travel. And for the first time, we knew what it felt like to be Beyonce. But more importantly, it put a spotlight on this important sector. And as everyone on the panel said today, it's as much about creating an inclusive community, which is the right thing to do, as much as it is about driving business. And so excited about where that is certainly going. We wanted to have a bit of fun in the last few weeks too. How cool was it that Brisbane dominated the Sydney and Melbourne Grand Finals? I know the, the results certainly didn't go our way, but the fact is we had all the headlines into that period and we wanted to have a bit of a fun with it as well because Sydney and Melbourne are our two biggest interstate markets. So we took out a lot of marketing and advertising in those home states. Uh, we were in the busiest street corners of those cities. We took out their newspaper ads and all you could see throughout those cities was Queensland. So, you know, the media coverage certainly went our way. And even though the results on the field didn't, it's so great to have all your products out there. And I'm sure they'll be uh, inspired by that Queensland holiday anytime soon. So working together as an, as an industry is certainly at the core of everything we did. Um, at the launch of the blueprint, as I said, we said we would work with you to hunt in packs to tackle a lot of these uh, ambitions. And you know, with TQ, if you look back and the reason why we were created back in the day, and you, for many that know Sir Frank Moore, it was all about creating and working with the industry and government to get results into the future. And you know what, you are certainly answering that call. In August, we said to you, we wanted you to start traveling with us again, and we needed to do it in numbers. And I wanna to say to you that you have answered that, and we are fully subscribed, and if not oversubscribed for all of our international missions at the moment. Um, we are, the borders have opened, we're certainly out there. We've been to South Korea, Japan, Singapore, the United States. We went to Turkey, 
um, and we are spreading that message far and wide. But we're not stopping anytime soon. In a fortnight, we're off to the UK and Europe. We've got over 33 operators joining us with 200 buyers as part of that. Um, we're heading into India with a minister. And then from there in the new year, we're opening up with New Zealand. You're coming to China with us. And then we head off to US and Europe again. So. Those uh, missions are integral and it's so great to see you putting the time and the investment to join with us in opening up these markets. But we know many of you can't travel as well and we know it's quite costly, so we are doing our best to aggressively target those trade events to come back to our home soil here in Queensland. So it's so great, uh, as much as we are partnering with ATEC to deliver new product workshops in Sydney, um, we're also targeting trade events uh, to come back to Queensland as well. And with that, um, we had ATE in May this year, and I've got to say the results don't lie. It has been the most successful ATE in the history of that event. It was on the Gold Coast. Anyone that was there remembers what a week it was, and for the first time in history, 100% satisfaction from both the buyers and the sellers, and so great to uh, experience Gold Coast and the council for making that work with us. So we're very excited about it, and I think one thing we were really proud about as well is it was is that it was the largest contingent of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander experiences that were able to exhibit with us as well. So we are certainly all working to share those stories with the world. And we had over 49% of the trade floor. So a lot of partnerships to make that happen. And uh, we certainly didn't stop there. We then worked hard to secure G'day back into Queensland. And it was a huge success here in Cairns. That trade show was flooded. We had 300 travel agents who specialise in selling the best of tourism offerings right here in Queensland. And once again, we hit the record uh, and for the first time from both buyers and sellers, 100% satisfaction rate from all of them. So we are doing our bit to make a memorable mark on our trade and hopefully they are taking those stories away because all again it's all about delivering business and I do shout out to TTNQ for being an awesome partner in those. We continue to keep going. We had ATEC meeting place here in Cairns as well. And um, it's so great to see us being able to secure those events. And we certainly didn't stop there because next up for Cairns, we're going into the business event space and Australia Next, which is formerly known as Dreamtime, will be held right here in this beautiful new convention centre. So business events are worth $4.5 billion to the, our economy. We're going to do a lot more in that space moving forward. And it's so great to have that event here next year. As Justin and I were saying earlier as well, we're working closely to bring tourism and trade closer together than ever before, and we made that commitment to you at the Blueprint launch in August. Um, it was only uh, weeks later, uh, as, as part of that launch, we said, you know, we have been given that 125 million, which was an increase in our budget, but we needed to make it go further. So we did partner with Trade and Invest Queensland, and it was literally only a few weeks later, uh, and or it was less than a few weeks, uh, we decided let's put out our first delegation together, and let's have the and, and the premier obviously led it. So, with partnering with TIQ, we were part of the biggest trade delegation to China, nearly a hundred delegates, and really, really proud to say that the tourism meetings led and opened up that delegation. So, it was so great to have that spotlight, and as the premier was saying, so great to have those doors wide open and timed with the Prime Minister also being there. So I do want to shout out to Justin and the TIQ team uh, because we're going to do it all again in two weeks' time as we head to India. And I've got to say, to have the education sector and the trade sector there with the tourism sector, it just builds that business case so much strongly in an international landscape that is fiercely competitive. So really excited about what's happening ahead there. So we do feel like you're coming along on the journey with us and we're doing it together and industry engagement is at an all-time high and now I think even seeing the numbers in this room shows that. Uh, we are absolutely smashing as an industry our previous engagement attendances across all of our forums. It doesn't matter whether it's conversations with the industry, our global market briefings, our online briefings, uh, we have record attendance at all of our forums and you are sharing everything you are doing with us as much as we are sharing it with you. So I'm really excited to see those numbers at extreme highs and hopefully they continue into the new year. 
I also want to stress the important around this industry engagement of the Queensland Tourism Network. Uh, we know that this network is quite unique to Queensland. So it's the department, it's QTIC, it's our RTOs, our LTOs and our peak body. So very unique that this network was created to support the industry uh, in delivering on their aspirations. And really a philosophy behind the reason TQ was created by Sir Frank Moore back in the 70s to connect our private sector with industry. So uh, we want to work with this network even closer than ever and we are looking at new ways of working moving into the new year and I have no doubt uh, that this network will be a key priority and a reason we will hopefully have some sex success into the future. Um, and um, <laughs> go on, keep going. Um, and <laughs> And uh, looking forward to the next 12 months as we look work through our new ways of working. Um, now, let's go to events because I'm really passionate about events. And um, our event story is pretty special. We said we're going to grow a $2 billion events calendar. We know we've got the Olympics and Paralympics, but we're super excited about the runway ahead. And we are securing and supporting some awesome events in Queensland. And uh, we can't do it without our partners. And I do want to shout out to the councils, the RTOs, and we've got our government departments here as well that are partnering and funding, whether it's stadiums, Queensland, Arts Queensland, Screen Queensland. We're all putting money to make these events go further. The Brisbane International is back. So great to see Pink in Townsville, and I know the council and Tal are super excited about that. Um, it's so great to work with Experience Gold Coast. We've had Tim Zoo on the Gold Coast, as well as the Pacific Air Show, which was phenomenal. Uh, the Mount Isa Rodeo is locked in for the next few years. The Ironman is locked in to Kansas Sunny Coast for the next five. We've got the Queensland Music Trails uh, that are going great, gangbusters. The Outback Trail as well, having stops in Gundawindi, St George, Quilpie, Roma, we've got Goma in Brisbane with fairy tales. The Brisbane Festival had record numbers, 1.7 million to be exact. And then we've got the Gold Coast version of the Oscars in the new year. How great to have Russell Crowe and the actors, and we've partnered with Screen Queensland on that. So there are some big events that we've backed this year, but bigger ones coming in 25. And great to work with Vida on the British and Irish Lions Tour. 30,000 UK tourists coming to Queensland for that. Um, that's going to pump some serious money into the economy, but it's going to be super fun as well. Um, I want to acknowledge that early question. I know we didn't get Tay-Tay, but we've got a whole heap of artists coming up. And I want to say that we have had in Queensland a record number of artists artists playing in this state than ever before in our history. And you can count Alan Graham for giving me those stats, but so great to see our music industry back. And with our business events, uh, we know that's quite lucrative. We're standing right here in this centre where it's going to really rely on this sector, but we've had some really big wins. Our strategy will come out in the next few months, but really, um, you know, it's about incentives. It's about really uh, leveraging our industry sectors. And we've seen some big wins. Cathay Life will come to Brisbane, 2,000 delegates. World Mining Conference brought 3,500. Got the Gold Coast and the Congress of International Communication Association, 2,000. 600 delegates. Some really big numbers. We've got another 39 events down the pipeline and 18 bids in play. So we've got a lot happening in this space. And as part of that blueprint, we said we're going to do some cool stuff with the uh, cutting edge technology. And we are experimenting right now with AI. There's a lot of discussion about AI at the moment and a lot of discussion about AI in the travel industry. And really soon, you're going to see visitors come to our queensland.com website where they're going to be able to plan their holiday with a chatbot that is tr completely driven by AI. Um, it's going to be built in-house, it's providing a seamless experience and it's really going to be collecting a lot of data for us as well. So this is a super compelling um, platform and we know that it's also going to be one of the leading first. So really look forward to updating you on that into the future. So there's been a lot happening and I know there's been a lot of change as well at TQ. And I do want to acknowledge we had our chair, Grant Hunt, um, a veteran of the industry, chair, previous chair of Tourism Taz and Tourism NT. He's now coming home and, and is the chair of TQ. He spoke yesterday and it's great to have him a few weeks in. I want to acknowledge um, Ollie has also joined our team. Ollie's uh, announcement nearly broke our LinkedIn, but so great to see you so popular, Ollie. But a really nice story around this that 
Ollie actually started with TEQ uh, straight out of uni, or during uni and then into uh, post-uni, and now he's finally coming back as a group exec nearly 20 years later. Um, it's another nice story with Kim McConney, who is here as well. Um, Kim hasn't even finished her job at KO, but she took leave to be with us this week. Um, she starts with us on the 5th of December, has a huge background in marketing and events. Love the fact that her highlights were organising the Super Bowl um, in the US. And another nice story, Brisbane born and raised and finally coming home for the decade of opportunity ahead. Uh, we'll have an announcement on our group executive really soon, and I also want to acknowledge Nick Elliott for being our group exec corporate and strategy and for hanging in there with me as we make through the change. And a shout out to all of our acting execs as well. So there's certainly been a lot that's happened. Um, and in the new year, as we said to you at the launch, we are going to go really big next year. So we are going to put out um, and launch our next big global campaign and we want to do that with you. So uh, we want you to be a part of it. We want you to have some fun with it. We're working through the concepts at the moment and keep an ear out for what that looks like because it's going to be big and it's going to be global. We'll also have some big blockbuster event announcements in the new year and importantly um, we're also doing a fair bit of foundation work around our brand and also our event strategy. So um, I think there's something really special happening in Queensland at the moment and I just genuinely want to finish and close and say that um, I, I do believe that it is the decade of opportunity ahead of us. Um, we're all certainly on this journey together. There's going to be some wins, there's going to be some losses. I think there'll be some stuff that we'll absolutely nail, but I think there'll also be some stuff that we completely get wrong and I think that's the journey that we have ahead of us. But I look at our history and I look back at the people and the legends that built this industry, whether it be the Sir Frank Moores, the Keith Williams, the Richard Powers, the Max Shepherds. I think there are so many that we take inspiration from. And I think the one thing they all did was that no matter whether there was failure or there was definitely um, some wins and losses, they kept going. And I want to say to you at TUQ, we're excited to be on this journey with you. We're certainly keeping going and we hope you come with us as well. Thank you.